Hello and welcome to the Undercut Podcast. We're back to review all the feeder series action from Singapore, which this time involves the return of W Series. It's been a bit of a wait for them, but they're back and they're providing a fair bit of action. So we'll crack on with reviewing what's gone on on the streets of Singapore. And to do so, I am as always joined by my ever-reliable co-host, Timo Albus Daly. How are you this evening? I'm very good, thank you, Jesse. How about yourself? Um, a bit of a hangover, well not hangover, headache, a bit tired. I had a fairly chaotic weekend, had a wedding, had a sprint racing series at Shuttleworth. But uh, yeah, all up and straight. You sure it's not a hangover then? It, no, the hangover from the wedding, it wasn't too bad actually. So uh, all good news on that front. Well, enough talking about my health. Um, we have a guest joining us as well. We don't have Ellie May with us. So we've just sort of, we've got the next best thing, another Ellie, um, to keep things nice and simple. Uh, we've got Ellie, a uh, freelance motorsports writer who uh, does a lot of interesting things around motorsports and F1. So a perfect fit to help us review the Singapore Grand Prix. How are you this evening? I am not bad. It's lovely to be to be here speaking to you guys. It's lovely to join you. So yeah, thank you for having me. And I'm excited to chat all things fast cars. All things fast cars indeed. So we'll crack on with our opening section of what the hell has happened. And uh, the important thing is, this is the first time we've seen W Series in Singapore or even Asia. So uh, important stuff there. And it's nice to see them actually get to run in Singapore because it's a demanding circuit. The conditions are something really quite novel for Formula One. Very few other circuits have a situation like this. So it's it's nice to see the drivers get this opportunity to be pushed in the new directions that you see from the bigger series of Formula One. And yeah, it's it gives that feeder series element to it, a proper sort of grounding where they can display the talent in a in a sort of strong and unique lay- layout. So uh, thoughts on actually getting to the... The only series? problem I had it was the fact that it was during the day, or like daylight hours, it was a bit like seeing your teacher outside of school, you don't know really what to do with it. And I think I think it just... It still worked really nicely in the race. It didn't like diminish my enjoyment of the race, but you kind of... You see all the sparks from the F1 cars. You would have liked to see if that had been the same with the W Series cars, and that would just make some cracking photos i'm going to appeal to that side of you there jesse but aside from that it was great to see it in asia and singapore and we couldn't have it in japan so again next best thing would be singapore so as as much of a shame as it was we don't get it suzuka very happy we got it here no yeah i totally agree i think um as well as as also having some asian drivers on the grid i think it's obviously nice to it would have been nice in japan and in the same way it was nice in singapore but i also think you know, for for the young drivers who are up and coming through the ranks and everything, getting that experience at Singapore, which is known as you know, it's a tough track. Um, yeah, I do think it, it was a good race as well. So I think all good. I think to be honest, yeah. Yeah, a sort of a positive move from W Series. And, 100%. Yeah, nice to. It would have been yeah, it would have been good to see them do the sort of the night side of it, the night challenge, and. Yeah, it would have would have been visually more stunning, but at the same time, I think if anything, in the daytime you've got just as much heat and humidity. The physical side of the challenge still remains. Um, weird how they would have had to patch that in because one thing I learned is when F one goes to Singapore, it doesn't actually adjust essentially F one's body clock. They all run on a slightly different time zone, yeah. which is why it's done at night so they can all function at peak performance at night time. I was watching a clip from McLaren on their social medias. Basically, the Hilton they stayed at was running late breakfast and running sort of 24-hour room service so everyone could stay on this very weird time zone so i'm wondering how w series whether it did fit into that or if it just sort of did its own thing would be interesting to know and probably worth a bit more of a a dive and a poke around but nonetheless it's uh, nice to see them have this new thing to branch out into speaking of branching out into things timo Yes, just the one bit of non-Singapore related W Series news there, because a little while ago Jamie Chadwick had an Indy Light test drive over in the States, which was very interesting, and I'm glad she got that opportunity. She, and of all the places to do it at Sebring, lovely, 210 miles around there, she racked up over the course of the test session. Said it was pretty tough because of the temperature and the humidity, I mean, it's, it's that part of the world you'll, it's again, kind of a bit Singapore, so maybe it's uh, Tests her out a bit. Not that it seems to do her much good in Singapore, mind you, but um, it was good that she got to have a go there. She said she was pleasantly surprised by how it all went and was very happy with it. So with her future still kind of up in the air a bit in terms of Formula 3, Formula 2, we heard Caitlin Jenner saying at the beginning of the season that she would quite like to help her get into F2 for next year. But that's one thing to say and another thing to actually do it. Maybe Indy Lights and IndyCar is 
is another route into F1 is more and more F1 teams start to have a little look at the drivers there at least. You've probably got the same chances of that if it's going to be over the next four to five years to get in there. So maybe not the worst idea in the world. And at this point, I think you're going to have to get creative, unfortunately, because the traditional methods of go climbing up that ladder are proving quite difficult outside of getting F3 tests. It's not translating to getting a full-time seat. So I'm glad she's trying that. And... Sebring as well. I just have a soft spot for Sebring, so I'm just very happy that you got to go there. I remember you mentioning Sebring when it was been. I think it was a WEC or IMSA round that you were, you were mm. going on about it, and it is a beautiful circuit. I really do like it. Was it bowl or was it the actual sort of street circuit part of it? Because I think Sebring got a bowl. It's the street circuit part of it. I think if I'm, I may be wrong, but that'd be the asterisks in my in my comment section yeah. there. But. Either way, very nice. Yeah, it's good to see her getting that test. And like you said, uh, IndyCar is being seen as not necessarily a feeder series to F1, but a sort of parallel you can work your way into and then step across from, which is we're sort of seeing almost the canary in the mind thing with um, Colton Herter, with the sort of constant willy won't he sort of will Alpha Tauri, will Red Bull, will someone be able to pull off this swap of being able to get him enough super license points to pull him across? And um, yeah, there's. There's rumours afoot about it. There's all the sort of, it's theoretically possible and it's becoming more and more of a reality as drivers come out of Formula 2 and end up into IndyCar as they finish in F1 and go to IndyCar. It's going to start going the other way as well, I think. So it's a it's a wise move from Jamie Chadwick. And if anything, if there's F2 teams or F3 teams that were hoping to get her and she's now shown interest going somewhere else, saying it's almost like that sort of do something or you're going to lose me sort of threat in a way from her if they're sort of desperate for her talent but don't actually want to do anything about it this is her going if you don't i'm just going to go somewhere else i, I also think, think... Oh, i was just going to say about about jamie and obviously like indie lights and everything i think now as well like we've seen obviously when you look at like k-mark obviously he went away for a year and he went into indie and then came back so I kind of think this whole discussion about indie lights to the also the other thing with indie lights as well is the fact that if you win that championship or whatever the does they call it a championship I guess, um, yeah, you you are like guaranteed a seat in IndyCar, which is something that the feeder series in like the FIA pyramid don't like that does, they don't offer that which is a discussion for another time because I'm sure you know everyone could sit down for hours and talk about that. So I also think you have to kind of think with if Jamie was to, you know, like, move on after W Series to Indy Lights, and if she stayed in America in IndyCar for, I don't know, a year or two, and then moved over, like, that can happen as well, and not in the sense of it being a feeder series. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I do think Jamie having that opportunity to test with Andretti was um, definitely a positive. There's that other aspect too of Indy Lights who say that not only are they guaranteed to get into IndyCar itself, but then the rookies themselves in IndyCar have their own kind of championship running alongside the main thing. And they they rank how the rookies in each season do and they make, make sure they get a bit of a spotlight on it. So Christian Lungard, we liked him in F2. He had a bit of dodgy 2021, but he then went and got within five points of Roman Grosjean by the end of his rookie year and got the rookie championship. So if she can get even top three in there in her first year and show that she's got the pace and that there's some consistent performances, well, the, there's an extra spotlight, which at a time where supposedly America is the next great frontier for F1 to finally conquer and all of that kind of jazz, that could actually be quite a good thing for her. And weirdly get her into F1 quicker than it would be if she was going to be in F3 and F2, which, again, that's a conversation for another day because that's not necessarily how that should work. But, again, gives her plenty of options there because if she decides, you know what, sod F1 after all this, it's not worth the hassle. IndyCar is really attractive to me now. She's then got that perfect setup for that to go into that direction as well and become a champion in that. Direction. And sometimes people are also, like, better suited, is that the right thing to say, to IndyCar? Like, we've seen Callum Eilat, who obviously was well bound for an f1 seat and then the rumors came around that he was going to be with alpha or, or whoever and then he didn't end up making that move to f1 and then went over to indycar and he's actually been successful there so there's also like it's mm. not like i think maybe in the past people kind of wrote indy off a bit more than more than it is now because we have seen these rookies move from f2 where they've been successful or maybe they've not had you know the greatest runner but then they've moved over to indycar and they've been really successful so it, it's always going to be a good option for Jamie as well. Definitely. Moving back into 
Singapore news, Jesse, we've got one little bit of housekeeping to get through before we get into the race itself. Yeah, uh, Ayla Agron uh, returned to W Series as she steps in for Teresa Babakova. She's uh, missing this round for an injury. I haven't got in my notes what the injury was. Do you know off the top of your head? I think it's a shoulder injury, I yeah, want to say. Yeah, not what you want for doing a street circuit, especially around Singapore. You're putting a lot of load through the arms and shoulders. So uh, I don't think W Series cars have power steering either. So it's no. not, not something you really want to be battling at that point in time. So... We wish her all the well, get well, and uh, hopefully we'll see her back in fighting form. They've still got Austin and Mexico to come on their calendar, haven't they? So they've yeah. she's got a, a slight reprieve from uh, slugging away to sort of get back into fighting form. So all the best for that one. The next note on the list then says elephant in the room. Yeah, whether or not we want to touch it or not, which I think we all know what the elephant in the room is, or do we wait until we have something concrete we can say on that and be mysterious to all our viewers and make them come back another it's time? It's also being mysterious to me, I'll say that much. You have not, you've not. been out of the loop all weekend then, have you? Oh, are we talking about that element of it, the one we had a big argument on the group chat about? Oh yes, that one. That's, ah, that's the, that is said elephant in the said room. I hope we all think um, about the same elephant in the room. We definitely are. It took him a minute. <laughs> it took me a minute to get there. I feel um, like it's, there's only one elephant in the room. The only thing sort of hanging over W Series at this point in time, more so than Jamie Chadwick not winning the championship in Singapore, is... Yes. Yeah, that. I wouldn't even consider that a baby elephant, so yes. <laughs> yeah. So we'll potentially wait and see how this new story develops, but I feel it'd be only fair to give the audience some clue as to what we're on about otherwise it's just us sort of going there's a thing happening we're not going to tell you because we're terrible at reporting. So we get them coming back to us for more. Yes but also if you're acting as a news reporter you should probably at least tell them a little bit. Um, it's early speculation that potentially W Series is in some sort of financial difficulty they recent or as far as we're aware had some uh, financial backing pull out I think it was supposed to be Interestingly, an American package. investor is what is coming from multiple sources there, which at a time when, like we were saying, America looks set to be very interesting for F1, it's not trickling down to where it should be. And in a time when you've got people in F1 are quite high up saying they'll happily support drivers and diversity and females coming up through the ranks to get into F1, as soon as something like this comes along, whilst it might not be their legal responsibility, it doesn't look great for them and their reputation to not put their money where their mouth is, especially when they're making, I think the technical term is a crap ton of money out of Vegas alone, that they could easily save W Series if it needed to, and they wouldn't even notice it on the balance sheet. Yeah, this is the argument we had in the group chat for the podcast, was a case of on a business sense, because obviously W Series is run as essentially a business the same way Formula One is a business. They're two, I don't want to say competing businesses, they're both operating on vastly different scales, but at the same time they're businesses in the same pond. There's no obligation on that front for one to step in and save the other or support the other. There is a moral obligation, obviously the amount of teams, drivers, team managers, principals, who have said sort of positive things about having women in Formula One, whether that actually comes to fruition and they do something about it in this instance, actioning what they've said and supporting the series is a different matter. I it seems another kind of thing where Lewis and Sebastian in particular have very outspoken on all these things they believe in and put a lot of money, of their own money, even into, in Lewis's case, programs and research to find out and create opportunities and better or equally to raise awareness of things. And you think it's all well and good, but you don't want to put it down to those two again to have to solve this problem when it's not theirs to solve if you understand my meaning because it should be the wider F1 community there. The owners shouldn't constantly be on Lewis and Seb but I think the, yeah. pro the other side of this is when you look at sort of Mercedes have very sort of deep reaching junior series and a lot of deep reaching support obviously there's kids in karting that are sort of getting support from McLaren Mercedes all sorts of different teams they've got sort of early eyes on people with a little bit of backing and support here the support comes in the form of supporting drivers. You look at Williams Link with Jamie Chadwick, you look at Jess Hawkins mm -hmm. with Aston Martin. You have this support for the driver as an individual, which I think is more than fair is fair enough. It's they could be doing more, don't get me wrong, they they could be doing a bit more with their female drivers. But then when it comes to supporting the series, I think it also steps into a very weird financial and sort of business grey area that sort of they're possibly skirting around the edge of because there's a lot of things that you'd have to get a lot of cleverer people than I involved in. And It would be a huge shame to, like, for W Series to be impacted or whatever, you know. It would be 
it, I think, you know, now, like, W Series is really popular, especially with, like, Sky taking it on and showing it on, on Sky Sports and everything. It's just putting it out there to even, even more people, even wider audience. So I think it would be a huge shame to lose it. Definitely. Getting back to the race itself, then. So highlights in a nutshell. Vissa won her first races of the season and first race win since 2019, I want to say there. she's It's been a long time coming. Uh, Alice Powell in a very good second place and Marta Garcia unable to convert an excellent pole position in the wet to a win, but she did manage to get third on the podium, so it wasn't all doom and gloom for her. Jamie Chadwick was out after qualifying in eighth. More of why that's important in our F1 podcast later. Somehow... And just kind of sort of testament to Jamie Chad with her first ever W Series retirement. Um, not not a great place to do it. Singapore kind of testing you a bit there, but again, just an interesting little stat. The other retirement from the race was Juju Noda after a bit of contact early on with Neri and Marty. And uh, a bit of a shame because, again, like we said, we have some Asian drivers here. It would have been nice to see them getting a bit further up the field. Bianca Bustamante did make some progress, but again, it wasn't as, as much as we maybe would be hoping for. But... Them's the breaks, unfortunately, it just happens there. And like we said, we've uh, would have, I've just got to know there would have preferred a proper night version, but we've gone over that already. So um, we can neatly go from that into our winners and spinners section. So I'm going to start with you, Jesse. Who is your winner for W Series in Singapore? Uh, my winner for this, I'm going to give it to Alice Powell actually, because she put up a pretty good fight. She made some overtakes in places we didn't expect overtakes to be made, regardless of sort of rank, league, or series. That is not a place where you expect you to be making a pass coming under the grandstands. And yeah, it's a sort of, again, a testament to her sort of cunning and her wit on track. She's almost got a sort of a Fernando Alonso sort of approach when it comes to making these overtakes. You sort of keep pushing and pushing the person ahead of you until eventually you have to send them in a slightly off track point where they're not expecting it. So they sort of don't fully keep their guard up as it were. And yeah, Those you just sort of, drivers, it's all trickling down with all of them. It, yeah. There's just, so, there's every now and then the W series car is not a perfect car by any means, but you can see these brilliant moments of sort of tenacity and cunning from the likes of Alice Powell is the one that always stands out for me. And Singapore with that overtake with the way she was, properly pushing by its through that entire race almost mi- sort of mimics Charles Leclerc pushing sort of Sergio Perez both of them sort of one pushing one pulling each other to sort of the raggedy edge lap after lap it was yeah top tier stuff from her for me this weekend Ellie who was your winner for this weekend uh, I definitely think uh, by its um it's been a season for her which has consisted of she's finished in the top 10 like at every race um and I think to finally get that win, especially at Singapore, which is, as we've already said, you know, a demand and track, a tough track um, in the heat and the humidity. And then obviously with it being W Series first visit to Singapore, um, I think essentially any anyone who was going to win win this race, you know, um, in Singapore with it being the first time and everything, it would it would have been a huge achievement. So, yeah, I definitely think she's um, my winner this week. I will go slightly differently. So I originally had Visser, but I had a feeling you might go there and I didn't want to steal that from, from my guest. I thought I'd be a bit harsh. <laughs> I'll go for Neri, not Neri Marty, sorry. That would have been very weird as a, as a winner for this weekend. Marta Garcia, I will go for because, okay, didn't convert pole to the win, but like Visser, she's been consistent pretty much all season. She's been very close, if not always near the top. And I think she's got another podium already this year. Already, I can't remember specifically where. I want to say Miami. Um, yeah, I think so. It's, it's, I've got pictures of Miami that look about right there. And again, pole position in those conditions on Saturday, that's not an easy thing to achieve. And again, it shows that, oh, like you point, Jesse, there, well, the cars are definitely not perfect. If you can see the talent you oozing through from these drivers in that kind of a car, in those kind of conditions then chances are you've got a pretty special driver on your hands there. And I feel like everyone didn't give her enough credit there for coming in third because she started in first. But again, like we've said a few times here, Singapore isn't easy and it's meant to test you out there. And again, if, if the W Series card maybe had some form of DRS or push to pass similar to IndyCar, then maybe there'd have been more chance for overtaking there. But again, Singapore, as we saw in the F1 and indeed with Jamie Chadwick, You've got to survive Singapore first before you can actually get to the overtaking stage. So, all in all, I think Marta Garcia 
solidly good job over there and should uh, maybe she needs an Indy Lights test as well. Mm. Along the similar line, I just want to throw a little shout out for the other Garcia on the grid, Belen Garcia, mm. who had an incredible save during, I think it was qualifying, where she went through a sort of a complete 720 at one point, kept yes. it out of the walls and kept going. And I think she was P5 overall in quali, so it was a pretty good performance given the absolutely atrocious conditions they all went out in. So, I mean, credit to all of them for actually getting out there and putting down some competitive times in those conditions. But yeah, didn't see F1 cars out in those conditions. In you did the not, race, they did didn't. You? No, they were too much of a wetty to actually go out <laughs> and give it a shot. So, uh, yeah, kudos to W Series for standing up to the W in the name, probably means wet series. Um, but. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely brilliant save from Belen Garcia. So I want to give that a shout out. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the footage of it, I think it's on her Instagram. Go find it because it's an absolutely brilliant series of pirouettes that she just collects up and carries on with. So chef's kiss. And so continuing with the wet theme there, we're going to slide into our spinner section for this weekend. And for me, surprising considering the rest of the season, but for me, it's Jamie Chadwick. So... Again, I was going to mention earlier when we were talking about the Indy Lights test, she is kind of just doing a bit of a Thanos and collecting all these different forms of motorsport to try a hand at to become the perfect driver as such with Formula Regional, she's done Extreme E, she's done IndyCar a little bit now, she's done W Series, and she's tested in some, some older F1 cars. But uh, no match for a wet Singapore track, it would seem, and qualifying bunged her down, and then she... Knew she could win the championship here, but I mean, she's got such a big lead, she didn't need to take any unnecessary risks necessarily. Um, but she kind of did, and turn eight or turn seven, I think it was, and just straight straight on the curbs, helping me with my other podcast. And I appreciate the promotional shout out she gave me for that, but uh, I don't need it at the expense of her crashing out of a race. Um, but yeah, just a bit of a a bit of an anomaly weekend for her, but uh, it's good enough for me to put her in my spinner section. Maybe it should have been Belen Garcia for a more literal taking of that, but <laughs> yeah. we, won't, we won't go for that. I was I'll say, throw it over to Jesse well, instead. Well, um, sticking with Chadwick for a second, obviously it's uh, weird that in both series we saw racing this weekend, qualifying screwed over the person who had a chance to win their championship, <laughs> and uh, neither person went on to win their championship this weekend when there was a chance for them to do so. Admittedly, both of them needed certain sort of situations to win it but i really wish i could go back a week to our preview episode and have that as my weirdly weird world prediction of the green <laughs> smug right now but imagine what, where did both max and jamie they both qualify? qualified in eighth yeah i was going to mention this in in the f1 podcast later and i probably will again but yeah it's kind of i was i saw jamie retire and i thought oh that could be interesting for for max for the race that spice things up a bit and granted it was spicy for other reasons but not quite the same but both of them also suffered a bit of a lock-up going through was it about seven or eight seven or eight for max as well max luckily mm. managed to make it i was i game. kept looking at that corner and i was like is it now is it now is yeah. it now? No. he made it into the runoff area kick spun it and made it out jamie was not quite as lucky and as you said end up I'm going to say this into the microphone on the curbs and uh yeah so anyway that's no she's not my spinner though my spinner actually was goes to abby pulling uh again she was of, blasphemous for you to be honest it's you're pretty much me. the I, abby pulling fan club president i speak so highly of her on such a regular basis when we cover the w series stuff and i absolutely love a brilliant little driver but <laughs> i just expected more from her this weekend i i yeah it seems it's one of those sort of harsh criticisms of i just wanted there to be more and yeah, uh, she made some good moves. She sort of, again, didn't put it in the wall. No silly mistakes, but I just felt there was a chance that she could have potentially had a bit more out of that race and unfortunately got stuck in a bit of a, not quite a DRS train, just a bit of a slipstream, really, and couldn't break free. What about you then, Abby? Who was the disappointment for your weekend? I'm going to really harshly use that word. Well, I think, I mean, I don't want to be a copycat, but um, I think a lot of people kind of, based off of, you know, our results uh, this year so far and, and how, how much she's, she's achieved and how many races she's won. I think a lot of people were expecting Jamie to, to take the championship. And yeah, of course, there were, you know, like she has to outscore Alice by however many points. And, you know, there's all the permutations, but I do think um, Jamie is probably my spinner just because, like we've said, you know, she took a risk that was probably quite unnecessary. You know, she could have stayed where she was. And even if it wasn't to be this weekend with the championship, at least she would have finished the race. Um, so, yeah, mm. I think she's probably my spinner. Yeah. 
Fair enough, can't say fairer than that. And uh, unfortunately, on, on that terrible disappointment, that is all we've got time for for this week on this episode. But join us again for all the feeder series from... A- I'm going to do that again because I completely must up reading that sentence. I'm not that is all we've got. but people are going to know you made a mistake. Oh, you, you <laughs> bastard. Uh, there you go, you could have edited that around that now. Well, I could just put join us again. Damn it. Join us again when we'll be reviewing all the feeder series action from Austin, which will hopefully be more W series. In the meantime, Jesse, where can people find you if they want to deal with more of you? I mean, see more from me. What do you mean, deal with more of me? Don't be so rude. Uh, if you want more of me, you can find me across uh, Twitter and Instagram is where I'm usually at. I've got but the uh, Undercut podcast on Twitter as well. I should probably plug that for a second. But if you want more of me, uh, look up Jesse on Cars. I'm also somewhere around on YouTube. But I haven't actually made a video for that in... Ooh, that's part of three quarters of a year um, and if you want more of me in a physical sense you can actually buy my work at uh, in Classic Car Weekly I'm so glad you... that's where you went with that yeah, well you never know if money gets tight uh, but yes if you want Classic Car Weekly we've got a new edition that will be out probably the same day this podcast comes out uh, in all good news agents and supermarkets I'm trying to think what I've got in this one I've got an interview with Richard Hammond that's it yeah, ahead of his new TV series I love Richard Hammond Eddie, just where... that there. <laughs> he's a darling <laughs> And if people want to see a bit more, I did, yeah. God damn it, man. Um, Back in your box. Eddie, where can people find you? Across Instagram and Twitter. It is just Ellie Does F1, nice and easy. Uh, Yeah, all good. Um, And things are happening. So things are coming out and things are happening. So, yeah. Tease if ever there was one. Mm. And as for myself, you can find me, as we have mentioned, on the curbs, the Nitro RX podcast as well. We've got a review episode from Minnesota out this week. Lots of fun action from there, including F1 for Jensen Button making his debut there. That was a lot of fun. Um, and I also write for Is It Fast and Paddock Sorority? And you can find me on Instagram because, of course, I'm a human being. That is pretty much it, though. And thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again soon.